So you've created your first song and now you'd like to bounce it down so that you can share it with others so they can check out your music. Um, in this video, we're going to take a look at how you can go about doing that. And you guys know that I am a stickler for details. So before we take a, the, a look at the actual exporting process for our songs or our stems, I just want to make a quick note that if we come up to the song at the very top here, I'll click and uh, then come to song information. This is going to display all of the metadata that your song is going to be tagged with. Now there's not much going on here. We just have an artist name, Quanta and the year. But if I click um, on this window, then we are taken to the meta information tab of the song setup. And then here you can put in a various information, songwriter, composer, and so on. Uh, and this will be tagged with your exported audio file. You can even include an image here, just clicking on the ellipsis, then you can open up the Explorer or Finder window on the Mac, and then choose an image that you'd like to use to represent that song. And so what you, once you've put the information in that you would like to use, uh, that will then show in this area. And then also know that you can choose to include song notes uh, in this area here. We have an area for track notes so you can add notes for individual tracks but let's come back to the info section and i'm just going to leave this as it is because we're just doing a tutorial i'm not sharing this song um so let's then come back up to song and we have export mix down and this is essentially all that you need to do to bounce down your track is click on here you can also use Control e so if i go ahead and select export mix down we're presented with this dialog and we can see at the very top we have location now this is where the audio file will be mixed down to so you can click here on the ellipsis and then choose a location then we have the file name. We can just click and put in whatever name that we'd like. If you don't change that, it's just gonna use the name that you have for your song. If you look here in the upper left-hand corner, you can see that's the name of my song and it's gonna put that in there. Then we have publishing. We have do not publishing. This is basically, if I click the drop-down menu, we can see we can send this to Not Notion, which is Personas' uh, music notation software. We can also choose to upload to SoundCloud. If you have a SoundCloud account and you've linked it with Studio One, you can also choose this as an option, but we're not publishing this in this tutorial. Uh, we then have format by default. It's gonna be on WAV file, but we can click on the triangle there and choose AIFF, FLAC, AUG Vorbis, CAF, or MP3. And then below that, we have some other settings for resolution and sample rate. So. With the WAV file, we have 8-bit, 16, 24, 32-bit float as options. For the sample rate, we can go all the way up to 192 kilohertz. If I were to change this to, say, MP3, then you can see that we are presented with a different option here for bit rate, and then we can make a selection here. So these are going to vary a little bit depending on the type of file that you would like to export. Now over to the right, we have the export range. By default, this is gonna be on between loop. And hopefully you can see this in the upper left-hand corner. These are the loop markers. So I don't actually have a loop set up, but this is what it's gonna be on by default. So you wanna be sure that you set your markers exactly where you'd like for your song to begin and end. And before we go any further, I'm gonna actually cancel out and set those markers by coming to this gray line up above at the top of the ruler. I'm gonna click, hold, and drag, and just set those about there. Keep in mind that if you have any reverb on your track, uh, that's gonna trail off, so you wanna be sure that you leave room for that. And uh, we've got our loop set. And actually, I'm going to open up the marker track and set the position cursor, song position cursor there at bar 17. Click plus to add a marker there. I'll come to bar 33 and add a marker there. And this will make sense in a moment. Let's come back up to song and export mix down. So now we have our loop properly set up up here. And uh, once we click okay, it's gonna export that range. Now we could also choose between start and end marker. And once again, we'll quickly come back to our song. We can see the start is here. And if I scroll all the way out, 
we can see the end marker here. And these are created automatically by Studio One. And you may be wondering, well, this seems arbitrary, arbitrarily placed. Why is the end marker all the way out there? Um, the reason why that is, is if we were to come to start and create a new song, then we can see Studio One is gonna set this song length to five minutes by default. So unless you change that, then that's what it's gonna use to uh, set those start and end markers. So if you were to set this to say three minutes, then that end marker will then be uh, moved up a little bit further than where it is now. But you can always just click hold and pull that in to wherever you'd like. Or, you know, for me, I think it's just simplest to set your loop where you'd like. And once again, we'll come back up to song, export and mix down. Um, so we took a look at that, exporting between the start and end marker. Then we have between each marker. So then this is going to render down, in our instance, several different audio files between each of our markers. And these are the ones that I've created. So we should have one, two, and then three, because we've got three and end. So we should have three audio files uh, if we choose the between each marker. So this is gonna be a useful feature if you'd like to export segments of your song. Now below that we have the option to choose between selected markers. And this is why I added these extra markers in here because we can choose to export between start and two, which would be this portion here. If I click on the triangle to access the drop-down menu, we can also choose between two and three, which would be here and then three and the end, which would be there. So we are also presented with a duration, depending on what we have set up above. And right now we're set on between loop, which is here. And we can see that it's gonna be one minute and six seconds is gonna be the total length of our audio file. Now, finally, we have a few options down at the bottom and we can select what we're gonna render down and we're just gonna be rolling with the main. We can bypass the master effects if we'd like. We can use real-time processing. We can choose to write our tempo to all the audio file. If I move this over to the side, the, our tempo is 146. So then this is gonna be tagged as metadata within our uh, mixed down audio file. We can choose to import it to a track within our song once it's mixed down. We can choose to close after export and we have overlap. So these are all of the options that you have available um, for you when you are rendering down your track. So I'm gonna leave this on between loop and then just click okay. Actually, I'm gonna change the location to my desktop, click okay, and then Studio One's gonna begin the process. And if you notice here, it says 3.2 times faster than real time, so, if you, we were to have chosen the real time option in the menu, then it's gonna take a minute and six seconds to render it down because it's gonna do it in real time based on the length of our track. Okay, so that's how we can export down a complete song or track. Now we wanna take a look at exporting stems and we're just gonna come back up to song and then below the mix down, we have export stems. So we can just click on this or control shift and E. And then once I select that, we basically have the same options that we have for exporting our entire song. But then we have this area here to the left where we can choose the sources, we can choose channels and these are gonna be from the mix console. These are all of the channels that are available within the mix, con uh, mix console. So all of these, for instance, are the impact. I have routed the drum sounds out on separate channels. So that's why we have so many more listed here than the tracks that are available within our arrange view. So if I were to choose tracks, it's, it's gonna be a lot less. So I will cancel out of here real quick and I'm gonna shift W to zoom out a bit. So we can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six tracks within our arrange view and the song. If I F3 to open up the console, then you can see that we have uh, more than six when it pertains to the channels that we're actually using. So that's gonna be the difference between 
the two. Again, so if we're exporting the channels from the console, we have a lot more and we can deselect any ones that we'd like not to uh, render down. And then again, if we come to the tracks, we have the one, two, three, four, five, six. And sample one here doesn't have any anything on it, so that's why it's not selected. Now at the bottom, we have a few options to select all, and um, that's just gonna be sure that everything is marked for mix down. We can choose to only do the active, so after I click that, the sample one should go away, but it doesn't, so I'm not sure about that. And then we have none, so those are the options there. And then as I said, everything else here is going to be the same. And once you've made your settings here that we've taken a look at, you can just go ahead and click OK, and Studio One will then begin that process. And that is how we can go about exporting our songs and stems within Studio One 4.